Okay, we're going to move into section two, ionic bonds and ionic compounds. Objectives, describe the formation of ionic bonds and the structure of ionic compounds. Generalize about the strength of ionic bonds based on their physical properties of ionic compounds. Categorize ionic bond formation as exothermic and endothermic. Remember what a compound is, a chemical combination of two or more different elements. Remember, they are different elements. New vocab, ionic bond, ionic compound, crystal lattice, electrolyte, lattice energy, main idea, oppositely charged ions attract each other, forming electrically neutral ionic compounds. You have to have a positive and you have to have a negative for it to come together to make a compound. Okay, so what is an ionic bond? It is the electrostatic force that holds oppositely charged particles together. Okay, remember you have to have a positive, you have to have a negative. Compounds that contain ionic bonds are called ionic compounds. Binary ionic compounds contain only two different elements. Now this is really important when we get to section three that you remember the term binary. Bi means two, okay? Um, you're going to have a metallic compound, which is on the left-hand side of the table, and you're going to have a non-metallic ion, anion, which is on the right-hand side of the table. So cation is positive, anion is negative. Okay, here we have a chart showing five different ways that sodium and chloride come together. Okay, so sodium, up here, let's start at the top, the chemical equation. You can see that sodium is now positive because it has given up an electron. Okay, chlorine has picked up that electron, making it negative. Looking at the electron configuration, you can see that sodium has an S1 that needs to give up so that it, it can have an electron configuration of neon. Chlorine needs one, so it picks up that S1, and it has an electron configuration of argon now. Okay, looking at the orbital notation, sodium has one electron in the 3S. Okay, it needs to give up that. Chlorine needs it, so now they are both noble gas configurations. Looking at the electron dot structure, sodium has one valence electron. Chlorine has, need, has seven and it needs one. So you can see how sodium has given up one, so it is a positive. Chlorine has gained an electron, so it is now a negative. Okay, they are both happy. And you can see the, orb, the atomic models down here at the bottom, like we had looked at before. We're going to look at a little video of this process. There we go. This run in here. A sodium atom contains 11 electrons, two in the first energy level, eight in the second, and one in the third. A chlorine atom has 17 electrons, with the outer level holding seven electrons. When sodium and chlorine combine, the sodium atom loses one electron and the chlorine atom gains it. Thus, the chlorine ion formed is stable with eight electrons in its outer level and has a negative charge. Sodium has lost the one electron that was in its third energy level. Thus, the sodium ion has a positive charge and is stable. Sometimes atoms combine by sharing electrons to form covalent bonds. Hydrogen gas exists in nature as diatomic molecules. Two hydrogen atoms share electrons with each other. The electrons move around the nuclei of both atoms. When two hydrogens share electrons with oxygen, they form covalent bonds to produce a molecule of water. Each hydrogen atom shares one electron with the single oxygen atom. Okay, the last part of that was covalent bonding, and we will do that in another chapter. Let's go back to our PowerPoint here. Okay, properties of ionic compounds. 
positive and negative ions exist in a ratio determined by the number of electrons transferred from the metal atom to the nonmetal atom. Remember, we are working with the left-hand side of the periodic table and the right-hand side. And you can look here. This is a very nice picture of a, a crystal lattice, they call this, a repeating pattern of particle packing in an ionic compound is called an ionic crystal. Sodium chloride is, shows this very nicely. You can see how every other molecule is a positive and a negative and how the positives and the negatives attract to each other with the sodium and the chloride. The strong attraction among the positive and negative ions results in the formation of what they call the crystal lattice, which, let's go back to the picture, is what this is here. The crystal lattice is a three-dimensional geometric arrangement of particles and is responsible for the structure of many minerals. And you probably studied this when you studied rocks and minerals in earth science. Okay, the melting point, boiling point, and hardness depend on the strength of those attractions. Now, if you look at sodium and iodine, you can see these are both in, sodium is a positive one, iodine is a negative one, so their strength isn't very strong, and you can see that their melting point is pretty low. As compared to magnesium, which is a plus two, and oxygen, which is a minus two, their boiling point and, and melting point are pretty high. In a solid, the ions are locked into positions and the electrons cannot flow freely. Solid ions are poor conductors of electricity. Liquid ions, or ions in aqueous solution, have electrons that flow freely, such so they conduct electricity easily. Okay, we did this at the very beginning of the chapter when we had the conductivity meter and we looked at the different solutions. Now, if we would have um, looked at the conductivity of the solids themselves, there wouldn't have been conductivity or electric electricity flowing. They need to be in an aqueous solution for the electricity to flow. Um, so we call those electrolytes when they're in a solution. An ion in an aqueous solution that conducts electricity is called an electrolyte. We, in our bodies, we have to have electrolytes. We need the sodium. We need the magnesium, we need the potassium, those are called electrolytes. Those are the things that they advertise that are in Gatorade and your, and your Powerades. And those are the things that you sweat out when you exercise. So electrolytes are very important. Okay, this figure demonstrates how and why crystals break when an external force is applied. And you need to have this heavy external force, otherwise these positives and negatives are not going to break apart. Okay, so a reaction that absorbs energy are going to be called endothermic. So think of it um, when you went to the first aid kit and you had twisted an ankle and you pulled out that ice pack and you, you broke it in half and it got cold. What's happening is it is absorbing the energy from the outside, causing that ice pack to be cold. Okay, reactions that release energy are called exothermic. Exo means out. So think about the hand and the feet warmers that we're using um, in our gloves and in our, in our socks to keep our hands and our feet warm. It's giving off heat, exothermic. Okay, the energy required to separate one mole of ion in an ionic compound is referred to as the lattice energy. And remember, depending on the strength of that bond, is going to determine how much energy it takes to break that bond. Smaller ions form compounds with more closely spaced ionic charges and they're going to require more energy to be separated. The electrostatic force of attraction is inversely related to the distance between the opposing charges. And we had talked about atom distance um, or nuclear distance in chapter 6. So the smaller the ion, the greater the attraction. The value of lattice energy is also affected by the charge of the ion. And you can see, once again, um, these two, potassium and iodine, a plus one and a minus one, have a small lattice energy. 
where magnesium plus two and oxygen a minus two have a very high lattice energy. Okay, why are solid ionic compounds poor conductors of electricity? What is the electrostatic charge holding the two ions together? That is it for section two.